Hello. Nothing. Right. I opened the blinds. We have a remote control. Oh, you, you guys ooh, stop waiting together. Ooh, fancy. So oh I goodness. rolled over. The room was dark. I, I thought. I, I are you going to mute, Brian? You're going to mute everybody, or are you going to let us mute ourselves? You can mute. You can mute yourself. You can hang, hang in there for a little bit. It's okay. We no. want to learn. Yeah. So disappointing. It is beautiful. I mean, it's it's pretty spectacular. Grace, what are you looking for? What are you looking for, huh? Okay, I'm muting. <laughs> Hmm. Probably start like five minutes after the hour, just give some people a chance to. Sounds good. In, and then we'll get started. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hope everyone's safe, <laughs> not too snowed in. Laura, are you in New Jersey or Florida? I'm in Florida. Ah, I'm 85. Be... 85? Today was a good day. We have had a not the most ideal winter, but it's been, okay. the past two days have been nice. A little windy. Can't complain. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I was in... I'm yeah, I was coming in, back to Jersey. Yeah, I was in Orlando two weeks ago for um, two tech conferences. It was nice. It was 85 degrees. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. Julie's in California. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and we have, Brian, uh, there's a lot of people who've never met you before who are part of the study group now. So uh, we've had quite a... Uh, at least 15 new members the past year. Wow, so they, they don't know all the brilliance that you can offer. Mm -hmm. So some of them I see listed as um, attending. So it's cool. Yeah. That's great. great. So um, for those of you, um, I am sharing my, my debt, you know, my, my slide deck. If you have your iPhone or Android phone and you kind of uh, take your camera and you click, you know, put it out there, you'll get the URL. So I'm giving you access to my slide deck because I, I there's there's a lot of information in my slide deck and more than I, I will be able to go over in the hour or so that we have, but I wanted to include a lot of information for you. So I'm going to jump around a little bit because I want to show you and highlight some things and talk about the impact of um, AI and what that means, especially for the students that we work with. So are you saying, Brian, that the Google link at the top is your slide deck? You see the, do you see the QR code? Oh, we, this, this funny code? No, you I know? do not no, see it. I don't either. Oh, let's yeah. see. Let me see, maybe it didn't share the oh. right screen with it. I saw a letter. There we go. You see it now? There ah, ah, there it is. All right. All right. You, gotta keep, you gotta keep me honest, above all things, keep me honest here. Yeah. Let's see, make sure there's another, there might be some other people. Okay. Four more minutes. Oh, yeah. So um, you have my slide deck um, and the QR code will take you right there. Like I said, I, I won't be able to cover everything in the slide deck, but I wanted to just give you all that information. I'm going to jump around a little bit so I can cover some of the more interesting and um, new developments. All right, I think we're we're gonna get we'll get started now. So for I I know there's a lot of familiar faces, but for those of you who don't um, know me, I'm Brian Friedlander. I have a background in uh, school psychology, and I was a professor of education at Saint Elizabeth University for the last 25 years. Oh, competing with. Uh, Oh, there's some other people coming in. Okay. Um, teaching courses in special ed and uh, assistive technology. And I consult to families and, and schools and helping them make decisions around some of the assistive technology and 
also work with families um, as well. So I wanted to kind of go over and talk to you about some of the kind of the trends and some of the new innovations, especially the impact of AI and also some new um, new tools that um, are going to be helpful. But before I start, this just came out um, and um, if you if you Google myths and facts surrounding AT, this is from the Department of Education, and it's really guidance to all the schools in the United States with regard to both myths and facts about AT, um, what's included in the law and policies. So it's a very quick read. It's something like 24 um, pages, but it, it's a good overview, not only for yourself, but also for parents as well when they try to understand what is assistive technology and what are some of the requirements that the, um, if I, I'm also going to to mute themselves, please. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, just going to mute. So this could be a great document, not only for yourself, but for the parents um, and the schools that you work with to let them know that this is, um, you know, available uh, to them, which is, which is great. Still, let me just... So the, the tremendous impact of artificial intelligence, or they call large language models or LLMSs. -L um, let me just see if I can mute everybody. And so with the AI, some of the things that are possible, especially the students that we work with, students can quickly summarize information. Teachers and students could differentiate information um, or text so that, for example, if a teacher in a science class is talking about photosynthesis, they could have um, you know, the concept uh, explained as if the student was a second grader, fourth grader, student in high school, and then that will change the way the AI model um, provides the text for that particular concept. So differentiation is, um, is really possible with just about any kind of information. Students can also do self-check some of the AI tools that will take information and create quizzes to check on um, your information. Uh, grammar checking. Um, so Grammarly has an AI component, which is pretty fascinating. Um, I even use it today to answer an email, um, and it did a really good job. But for students that sometimes have trouble starting or knowing where to start projects or even an email, something like Grammarly could be fantastic. And also a lot of the, new, a lot of the newer mind mapping applications could be a great place for students who um, have those language based learning disabilities that have trouble generating ideas, um, it can you know, basically give them uh, an outline or a skeleton to work with when, you know, before they go off and write their essay or research um, paper. So this is, um, this is Grammarly and is like free and premium, um, but it, it, it is a really interesting uh, tool, not only can, like I said, help with grammar, but it can actually um, respond and answer email. So even if you're a busy clinician, it could be a great tool um, for that. I'm going to go out of this for a second and let me just go here. Let's see. So if I let's see, let me take it off. So you see this little G over here. Oh, shouldn't have done that. Let's see. Let me try to. Oh, there it is. See this little G over here. If I click the AI tool, um, how do you want to start? So I can I can do something like write an email about, let's say, returning the uh, broken fishing, and then when I click over here. And then I can hit insert 
and you can see what it what it did. Um, so if you have so if you're in an email and there's a context, it will look back into the context of your email and it will respond. Now I could go in and change it, but again, for maybe some of those high school or college students that you know, you know, you're working on certain independent skills um, and working on some of these real life skills, this could be you know an interesting tool, um, you know, to to work with, and it could do the, it can do the basic grammar checking as well. This is what kind of started the revolution is chat GPT. It's at version, so version 3.5 is free um, for everyone uh, to use. If you wanna use 4.0, uh, you can use it if you're in Microsoft Edge. If not, you know, the premium would cost you some money if you go directly here. But again, if I wanted to say, you know, explain, explain the concept of photosynthesis to a, let's say second grader. And then I click on that. Oh, I don't want to send it here. So you can see how quickly it did that. And then if I say, explain the concept of um, photosynthesis to a college student, so you can see how it gets into um, the technical aspect of it. So again, if you need to differentiate um, or help a student understand a more complex process or concept, you can go to ChatGPT and help you uh, work through that with your, um, you know, with the students that you're working with. So that's ChatGPT. So this um, Google actually just renamed their LLM to Gemini. It was called it was called Google Bard, and so it looks. This is this is their interface, and again, you can, um, you know, you could, you know, ask any questions of it. Um, so let's say, um, what's the best way to uh, start writing a research paper. So again, this could be a good way even for you, you know, if you want to use this as an outline, if you're sitting down working um, with a student, you can, um, you know, use this. And of course, this integrates with um, Google Docs. Let me see if there's anyone else coming in. No, okay. This integrates with Google Docs. I can share it, um, I can export it, um, which is nice, or copy and paste it. So now uh, when you hear the word Google Gemini, you know that it's um, basically their LLM, that, that's, the, that's what they're, they're calling it. And they, well, most of these companies will have a free service where the model won't be as large as, as if you, you pay for the premium service. So I think Google's gonna charge $20 a month if you want to um, have the, you know, the best service. Now, if you're using, if you're using Windows, you may see down over here in my taskbar, there's, um, this is Copilot, and this is a beta uh, or preview. And it, when I click on this, oh, it opens and it's not opening in the right place. Let's see, can I open it? I, uh, let me see if I can open it. So if you're in, let's see. So if you're in Microsoft Edge, you can click on Copilot, which is up over here, and it's loading. And then you could ask your question right down over here. So um, let's see how much. Let's see. Um, tell me about the weather today in New Jersey. Let's see what it does. So um, Microsoft has branded their um, chat, which basically is chat GPT 4.0 as Copilot, and it's gonna be integrated into all the Microsoft Office um, suite. So you can see that's always available uh, in a panel. 
And the other nice part too is accessibility. There's also the read aloud feature for those students that have reading challenges. So Microsoft has done a really good job of um, adding a lot of accessibility to their, uh, their platforms. So I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate this, but if you go to Conmigo, this is, um, Con, this is Khan Academy, and they've added uh, a chat bot. They're calling it Conmigo, which is basically a, um, a, a chat bot to, um, tutoring agent that will walk through students um, and teach them the skills for, you know, whether it's a grammar lesson or they're solving a math um, problem. So Solomon is now uh, doing a lot of beta testing with this, um, and it also has security built in so that if students are interacting with the chatbot inappropriately, you know, it will flag it and teachers will be, um, you know, given, you know, will be given an email or an alert that something's not quite right. But this is basically um, a virtual uh, tutor um, that uh, works using chat, you know, using basically chat uh, GPT as its engine. And for those of you that are teaching reading, um, Microsoft has just uh, released this as an independent tool. And this is Microsoft Reading Coach. Um, and so this uses AI to develop a reading uh, fluency. Um, and uh, again, it could be a, another you know, great exercise um, that you can use with students who you're working on reading fluency. Uh, I think students would find it engaging um, and it uses a lot of AI in the background um, to you know, work with students on reading fluency, um, which is another interesting, interesting tool. Any, any questions? Any questions? Just a reaction to what you've seen so far? You can unmute yourself if you want. No, we'll go on. So um, I've been I've been using been a real advocate of mind mapping mind mapping apps and tools for many many years. Um, I started when I started way back. Um, probably many of you will be familiar with Inspiration. Um, it was a great mind mapping tool. It's actually um, it's it's still alive and kicking. It's actually. Um, is being developed by a company in the UK, and they're uh, continually um, they're continuing to develop it. It's still basically a desktop application. But what's happened over the last um, several years is that these tools have become basically web-based um, apps. And so this one um, is called AOA, and this is a web-based app. And one of the interesting things uh, about this one is how it actually um, can incorporate AI. So you can see that you have two different AI features. One is generate ideas on a topic, or the other is the student can paste um, text about a particular topic and it will create a mind map. Let's generate one like this. Does anybody have a topic they'd like AOA to try? Anyone give me a topic? It's got to be some topic. What's the most user-friendly AI uh, tool okay. at this time? Let's try most. Um, how about easiest? How about easiest or easiest? Easiest AI tool. Let's see what it does. Create. So you can see it's starting to um, process. And so I don't know that. So you can see that maybe it didn't do as good a job as, I'm gonna go back, let me go back um, home for a second. Let's try it, let's try, let's try another topic. Um, let's see, um, how about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try global warming, let's try that. Great. 
Did I not do that? So again, something like this could be a great start for a student, um, helping them to sort of come up with some um, some ideas. So this is just the start of it. And of course, students can add additional um, information. And then if they want, they can also, um, if I click over here and click AI and I say um, ideas, it can then generate additional ideas right off that topic. And then students can add notes and links and citations and things like that to get the writing process um, started. And of course, they can also they can also add images if they want. So this could be a really good way, a good idea to help generate ideas. And then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna demo it now, but um, the other thing too is um, students, you know, can take um, information, text, words. Uh, up to, I think it's up to 12,000 characters, um, 12,000 characters, drop it in here, and then it will build a mind map from the text that they paste in there. So it could be historical event or it could be um, any other information and it will generate a mind map um, as well. So it's kind of an interesting, um, interesting tool in that regard. And there is a couple that do that. So I gave you some others that some of these have um, like 30 day trials that you can uh, take a look and, um, and and use them as well. And some of them have also um, moved not into just mind mapping, but also this could be a great tool for students that have, um, you know, executive function um, disabilities because uh, they have something called uh, Kanbans. So the students can easily kind of track tasks and assignments very visually. And then what happens is the program will actually email the student um, when they're in danger of not meeting their goals, um, depending upon uh, when they put the date of when that project um, was, was due. So this is a, another way to kind of look at task management um, and handling assignments. And again, this might be appropriate for high school or college students who are looking for a different way to, um, you know, to, to track their work and track their accomplishments. So jumping into the reading technologies, um, I mean, over the last um, couple of years, uh, higher quality text to speech, um, high quality OCR optical character recognition, and that's where AI comes in, um, it plays a big part in being able to kind of fill in the gaps. It's almost if you ever used your iPhone and you've used the um, Siri with the speech dictation, sometimes you'll see Siri swapping out words when it understands context. And the same thing is true with some of these OCR technologies. They'll use context and AI um, to kind of fill in the void and put the right word in there. They're a little easier to use and also immediate um, immediate access. I'm going to going to jump to um, this one. So there's a a lot of these um, tools, and I'm gonna I'm gonna move to. Um, so a lot of these tools have come out um, that are basically very portable. This is called Scan Marker Pro. Um, it just recently um, came out and it uses uh, text, uses text to speech. It's basically the, the power of an Android operating system is, is in here. Um, so there's a lot of different things that we can do with it. And the whole, the whole idea um, of this is to give students quick access um, to text especially if they're in classrooms where um, students, get, you know, teacher gives out a worksheet. So you can see it's, a, it's got a touch screen. Um, students can select the function that they need. Uh, there's also settings. So um, this particular unit um, supports both Wi-Fi 
and Bluetooth, so students can use their Apple Pods or any headset uh, that has Bluetooth. It has Wi-Fi because this can also, this has uh, translational services, so it can translate five lang up to five languages without Wi-Fi, but 55 languages with Wi-Fi. So a student can scan in English and listen to the results in French or um, up to 55 different languages. But if I want to, the student needed to read something, I could just take take the pen and then like a highlighter, go over it. I wanted to take after the creature. But he ran away. He ran faster than. So you can hear it, that it read. It also shows it. Um, if I click on a word and click on creature, so over here are some icons. So the middle one is the dictionary, and we're constant. So um, you can see the, the definition is there. This is version one. The next version that comes out will have a little speaker tool, so it will read um, the definitions um, as um, as well. So this can be again a first, you know, first line for a student um, who needs access to text and uh, you know wants something very portable and very easy um, to use. I just wanna kind of show you the translation feature. So if I click on this and scan. So I had Hebrew, so you can do it, you can do Arabic languages um as well so it's a pretty pretty powerful tool um easy to use and it also for the um we have any i know we have some ot's um students can also um i'm just going to go back into the read function student it comes with this tracker so students can take this and just run it across for those students that have difficulty with fine motor they can use that window to help them See, but he ran away he ran faster than HCC 8 second 88. So that's Scan Marker um, Pro, but probably um, probably one of the most innovative um, uh, technologies is the OrCam Read. Uh, this is not an inexpensive solution. This is a pretty high end solution. This is about a just a, so Scan Marker Pro is about a two hundred forty nine dollar solution. This is about a any like a between a two thousand to twenty two hundred dollar um, solution, but it's probably one of the most innovative reading solutions. Um, this does not require Wi-Fi. It just basically takes a picture of the page and it reads it. So there's just a, a, a couple of buttons at the top. Oop. Uh, and all I need to do is take picture. Frankenstein, chapter four. I wanted to chase after the creature, but he ran away. He ran faster than any man could run. I watched him as he climbed up a steep mountain and then disappeared over the other side. Oh, how unhappy I felt. I had wanted to discover the secret of life. Instead, I had created a monster, and now the monster had killed my brother. I did not know it then, but my troubles were just beginning. So you can see how quick... Um... That that is. This also supports um, headsets, so you can actually plug a headset in, um, or you can use a, a Bluetooth. You can synchronize it with a Bluetooth device um, as well. Um, both this technology and the one I showed you can also read, um, a com you know, a computer screen. So a student can be, you know, um, looking at a let's say a PowerPoint slide deck and. They can point and take a picture of the, um, the slide deck on the screen and it will read it. And this can scan on screens um, as well. So this is a really, um, I mean, it's a really, it's an elegant and really innovative uh, technology. It's a pretty incredible. 25 years ago, I saw Ray Kurzweil who developed the, the Kurzweil reading machine, later Kurzweil 3000. He had a Nokia phone and a Canon digital camera, and he literally had duct tape, he duct taped them together, and the camera took the picture, 
and the Nokia phone processed the text and read it aloud, and then to be able to move it into something this portable and this small is pretty um, incredible. So or this is the first version of Orcam Read there. They just released Orcam Read 3, which allows the student to take the text um, that is basically OCR or scanned and send it to a um, the or an Orcan app on a uh, on a computer, and then on the computer the students can sort of manipulate, read it on the computer, and uh, you know make the text bigger, smaller, uh, customize the reading experience. So uh, this is a great technology. I like everyone else. I wish it was less expensive, but um, it still is. Um, fairly expensive. Um, and again, a lot of these tools are also used with the visually impaired. That's how this company started with a, um, uh, a, a similar program, a similar uh, piece of hardware um, um, for called My Eyes, which would be used by individuals who are visually impaired with that, which has some other functionality for the visually impaired. But uh, this is a really um, interesting, uh, you know, interesting piece of hardware. Thought, any thoughts or reactions? Or... Brian, I actually do. It's Lori. Yes. Um, so for people who are visually impaired, they have to be able to either be able to manage the tool on written word. And right. if they're blind, they really can't do that. Um, and then if they're... Um, if they have motor coordination issues or um, ocular motor control issues, right. uh, someone with um, perhaps cerebral palsy, like upper body involvement, like how how can they manage these tools and then still get the um, the feedback? Or did somebody? Yes. Yeah, so the um, the Orcam Read Three, but they both have a um, like a tripod mount that you can actually um, attach it to. And then you could slide the book just under that in that area. Um, and then you can use either uh, voice commands or even hand commands to, in, in a sense, engage the shutter. Um, so it makes it, you know, much, you know, much more accessible to individuals with visual impairments. Or Brian, oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, or significant motor yes. impairment. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could. I mean, for the scan marker is real. I mean, you need to have a certain amount of dexterity and uh, you know eye-hand coordination. But for the visually impaired, uh, you could use the um, you know the uh, the OrCam. They also have something called My Eyes, which basically is the, is the camera that's uh, basically sitting on the on the side of the glasses um, that and individuals can use because it can do facial recognition as well, also identify. Um, dollar bills, identify, um, you know, like uh, food if you were shopping in a store as well. Uh, Brian, it's David yes. Mitnick. I'm just curious, the 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 fancy one, the Orcam Read, yes. does it also do multiple languages? I'd have to, I'd have to check on that. I'd have oh, to okay. Yeah, yeah. What language, what language were you, what language were you thinking? Um, no, I was just wondering about, I, oh. I mean, personally, I was just, just like you said, the scan marker could read. Right. In it's different good. languages. Yeah. I, I can, I can check. Um, I, 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 can I know, check. I, just I know it does, I know it does Hebrew because it was developed in Israel. So I know it does Hebrew. Okay. Yeah. Um, but okay. that's, that's about it. Yeah. Any other, any other questions or thoughts or? So while I have the camera up, so just want to talk a little bit about um, note taking. And one of the, um, I think one of the biggest impacts in the area of note taking and the trend that we're seeing is that a lot of tools are, are moving toward um, audio. So capturing the audio and then ChatGPT is doing the uh, either the transcription, the summarization um, of the uh, material. So I'm going to attempt to do this. So this this product is um, it's called Plaud Note. You can see P L A U D like Plaud, and there's um, there's also um, an app, and sometimes it's tricky with. So 
So, um, oh, there we go. So there's a um, there's an app for Android and iPhone, and then you also have the um, the basically the this is the digital audio recorder, and so. What I'm going to do is I'll do just a little bit. The whole idea is, this, let's say the student comes into the classroom, and um, all I'm doing there's one there's one little button, and I'm just going to press that button, and you can see that little light goes on, and now it um, automatically turned on the application, and that's my um, my voice being recorded now. So a student can come in, um, turn it on, um, and their phone doesn't have to be out because all the audio is taking place in this device with also using AI for noise cancellation um, as, as well. Um, and then when the, the student is done, they simply press that button again. So I'm just gonna press that button. And um, you can see, you can see that it, it stopped. And then I'm going to hit transcript, and I'm going to do English. I'm going to make believe this is a meeting note. And now it's using Chat GPT for the um, transcription um, services, and should be done in a in a little bit. That was only it was 37 seconds of um, of audio. Uh, and in addition to the transcription, you can see there's a tab for um, summary. So there's the there's the transcription. And again, it you know it gives you the time, and you can see it does a really it does a really good it does a really good job. If I click on the copy icon, I can copy this and paste this into Google Docs or wherever I want. If I go to summary, you can see um, it automatically summarizes it. And it will also give me um, also give me a little bit of a, a mind map um, as as well. So and so all of this is taking you know it all these features um, are able to be um, done using this tool because of ChatGPT and the, and the power of, um, of that that tool set, which is um, interesting. And what's nice about this is that you know students don't have to have the phone out. And again, in certain classes, um, you know maybe uh, faculty or teachers don't want uh, students to have their cell phones out, so a student can come in with that. This is also in a MagSafe ma um, package, so I can actually um, with a magnet, it kind of adheres to the back of your your phone as as well. So it's a it's a really nice um, solution, and it's only. Now that it's available is because of you know the chat GPT services, it makes all this um, all this possible. The biggest issue that we face with a lot of these technologies, I'll, I'm going to show you some more, is you know um, the the ability or you know school policies for um, audio recording in the classroom. Not as much of an issue at the college level, um, but certainly. A, at the high in the high schools and public schools, um, a lot of school districts don't want to allow students with disabilities to uh, record audio. Um, but you, the feature set um, that is available when when audio is available is pretty um, pretty incredible. So uh, I, I don't know if this is going to have to be policy changes or advocates or parents are going to um, you know kind of push the schools to. Make some changes because most of the most of the accommodations that are taking place and most of the applications that are uh, coming down the pipe are all utilizing, um, you know, audio as the base to do this kind of transcription and provide summaries and those kinds of things. So, do you see any of the schools you work work with uh, allowing audio recording in any shape or form? will be, uh, it definitely will be an issue. So, um, so I mean, I would say most of, most of the students, especially at the high school, college, definitely at the college level, one of the areas that a lot of colleges will make 
um, modifications and accommodations is in the area of note-taking um, because they realize that's probably one of the more cognitively challenging tasks for students. And so a lot of them are moving to uh, platforms like otter.ai, again, audio recording uh, trans transcripts uh, and summaries of lectures. Um, so you, you'll see that um, at a lot of colleges, they're offering Otter AI to their students as a form to record um, lectures uh, in, the, in the classroom. It's a really nice application in the slide deck. Um, if you have a chance to go through it, you, these are videos so you can actually watch um, and you know learn about some of the features. This is the voice recorder that I just um, shared with you. Um, this should be available probably by the end of this this month. And then you have a lot of services um, like Pigeon Messenger, which um, basically is a is an app um, on you know iPhone or Android phone. Uh, does audio recording and then it supplies um, full transcript. Um, summarization, and in some cases, even a study assistant. So it'll look at the information that was transcribed and will will create quizzes and quiz the student on the information um, in the lecture. So these are, um, and most of these are pretty, um, pretty easy programs. Let me just, pretty e easy programs to um, kind of navigate. So this is um this is Pigeon Messenger and um it's it's fairly it's a, it's an app on the iPhone and uh, to get to get started um all the student would do is just uh, tap on that on the plus and uh, hit record and now uh, hit the record button. So now Pigeon Messenger is just um, recording the lecture. Um, when it's done, it takes a little bit of time. It processes the um, contents and provides a, um, a full transcript of that lecture. So I hit stop, I hit keep, and let me do a webinar. Hit save, and then the um, the program is just um, you can see it says generating uh, generating transcript. This program, um, if the student wants to pay uh, additional um, additional amount, uh, there'll be generated professional notes uh, from the transcript um, as well, a little bit more maybe organized in the content. So a lot of these companies are, can provide some really interesting. Um, you know, services once the, you know, audio has been um, recorded. But this would take, you know, teach a student how to, how to use this is pretty much pushing, you know, a, a couple of couple of buttons and then pretty much, um, pretty much done. So let, let, let just kind of just show you the transcript, very similar to the other one. So now I have two files. So here's the, um, here's the, here's the transcript you can see. And then if I go here, the student can also take some personal notes um, as, um, as well. And you can see request notes. So this would be the professional notes um, and, which, uh, and um, you can see that you can pay additional um, for that if you want. But again, this is a very quick way for a student who has difficulty taking notes to be able to provide them with a, um, you know, a full transcription of that uh, of that lecture, which is how nice. close to the um, source of um, the audio does the person have to be to get an accurate recording? Um, I don't know. It's a good. I, I you know, I would say most most of these are probably. I want to. I I want to say probably about. Uh, I would say minimum. You probably you know, closer you get the better. But you know, five to ten feet uh, would probably be. A good, uh, you know, a good, you know, a good part, you know, a good place. The other thing too is you can also you, you even use an old, um, 
you know, kind of digital recorder, and uh, then you can take the, those files and upload them and process them um, as well. So if, you know, if you needed, uh, you know, you don't want to put your phone that close, you could always take a digital recorder and place it next, closer to the source, um, and then you're good, you're good to go. But let me, let me minimize this. So the other, um, just want to, one of the other um, major applications, where is that thing? Yeah. So the, this, um, this application, Glean, is probably the leading note-taking application at the college level. Um, a lot of colleges have site licenses for this that they then give to students to utilize for taking notes. And the way this works, or the best way it works, is that students are given basically the, the thumbnail presentation, either in a PDF or a, a slide deck. The student loads the slide deck, and then what they can do is actually record the audio associated with each slide. Um, when they do that, students can uh, then, if they want, they can type some notes about that individual slide. Um, or they can actually go back even after the lecture and add some additional information. And this provides, um, after they're done, um, this provides a full transcript of what happened in the classroom. And they recently just added um, closed captioning. So if you have students that um, have, um, you know, uh, any kind of uh, hearing uh, difficulties, uh, they can actually use this um, in real time to. Uh, you know, for closed captioning. Um, it's a really, it's a, it's a full featured application where the intent is really for the students to be a little bit more, you know, engaged in the note-taking um, process. You can see down over here, the students can add text as the lecture is taking place. Again, related to a, that, that specific um, slide that the lecturer is talking about. Um, and this can work with PDFs, um, PowerPoint presentations that can be imported um, into this. On this on this panel over here, you can see the, this is the audio that's being captured, and then you can see the next tab is is transcript. Um, so the student can um, use this in lots of different ways when they're in the classroom. This can also be used uh, for stu when students are in. Zoom meetings or Microsoft team meetings. So it can be used um, when they're also online as well to record uh, the events that are, are taking place. But I would say this is probably the number uh, one tool um, being used uh, at the college level for, uh, for note taking. Brian? Is, yes. This reminds me, this looks like the AI version. Remember that pen that recorded while you took notes and, and, and kept the recording in the same place on the pay, on the special note uh, notebooks. Yeah, uh, uh, this one, LiveScribe. Yeah, LiveScribe. Yeah, this looks like so the it, AI version of LiveScribe with extra features. Yes, yeah, and plus the fact that you're basic, you can import the contents, so right. you're actually right. recording it um, there. So yeah, it's a great, it's a great, um, it's a great tool. Like I said, probably. Otter AI and Glean are probably the two top applications you'll find at the college level when students are getting accommodations for um, for note for note taking. So it's certainly um, you know again just for you to be cognizant. They do have um, I know Glean I think has a thirty day trial. So again, if you're working with students that are transitioning um, who will be going off to college um, in the in the fall and have you know, uh, an IEP or and expect to get accommodations at the college level, this would be a great application to introduce them um, to um, so that when they go to college, they can say they had some experience um, with it. So there's definitely a 30 day trial um, for this. And, uh, it, you know, since you're a professional is working with students with disabilities, if you take some of the webinars that Glean uh, has to offer they'll oftentimes give you um, a, a free license so that you you know so you can work with students and show them um, how this tool can be used so again if you're working with students that are going off to college this would be a great tool to introduce them to so in the area of note taking which th this is the next uh next trend so um 
another another trend that is happening you're going to see a lot more of these kinds of applications I, I like i think i like to call this augmented note taking so just imagine you're taking notes on a particular topic and you want additional information you can actually call on ai inside the application to add ad additional information to what you're doing. So this is called Nebo.ai. This is available today on an iPad. Um, and it's from a company called MyScript. Uh, MyScript has been developing algorithms and AI for handwriting for probably over 25 years. And a lot of companies that are using handwriting recognition software use their um, software, develop software development kit to plug into their um, apps. I'm going to kind of show you this video just to give you an idea of what the future is going to um, look like um, for augmented note-taking. Hi, this is Brian. And uh, in this quick demo, I'd like to um, share with you uh, an app that I've been um, working with called Nebo from MyScript. MyScript for many years has been developing incredible um, algorithms um, that uh, help handle handwriting recognition. Recently, they've integrated um, AI into their note-taking application. And this one happens to be um, on the iPad. And um, you can see I, I wrote some notes about um, John Glenn. And you can see they go down here. But if I wanted to find out a little bit more information and use AI, I'm just going to take the, um, the selection tool. And I'm going to go down to the AI button down here. And I'm going to say explain. And you can see how it returns additional information about John Glenn. If I want to bring this into my note, I can just click on the three dots and say add to page. And then there it is. I'm going to move this down and you so that you can see it. I'm also going to um, resize it a bit so you can see that. And I've been calling these kinds of applications augmented note-taking because this can be a great tool for students who uh, take some notes but then need some additional information to, um, you know, to fill in. In addition, I want to show you the, um, the chat feature. So I'm going to click on chat, and this is where you can um, ask the chat bot um, some questions. So I can say can write, when did John Glenn die? And then I'm going to click the check mark. So you can see that um, you can also generate additional uh, information. Um, let's find out what was the name of the, I guess, airship. Let's see what it does. That was, that did not work out. Okay, what was, let's try this. What was the name of the rocket that so you can see it return friendship and if i want to i can click on that i can also um, copy it or um, add to page and you can see um how easy that is uh, to utilize so this could be a great tool for students both high school or college that may need some additional support where you want to add additional information um, into your notes to make them more complete. Well, I hope you enjoyed. So um, it gives you a little, a little bit of a sense of 
where this is going. And then in the next in the next two months, this application um, is coming out. This is a digital pen. Uh, you use digital pen and paper, and then ChatGPT will do the handwriting recognition and then also provide you with, it'll understand the context, it'll be able to provide you additional information about what was in the contents of your note. So if you're in a, let's say, a, a team meeting and you have um, certain tasks or action plans, it will go through and give you a list of what you need to do based on what you were discussing in the meeting, or if you're a student, it may go in and explain some other concepts um, to you. So a lot of these kinds of technologies are coming out to, in a sense, augment or take advantage of chat GPT and what it can do. So again, you could be a student could be taking notes, handwritten notes, and then um, it will summarize the contents um, of the notes that were written. Um, so this should this should probably be here by the end of March. This is a Kickstarter project, um, and uh, you see the developer seems to be uh, fulfilling the, the, at least the, uh, the 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 schedule of when he said he'd be complete with it. So I'm hoping to see this sometime um, in March, which is going to uh, be interesting to play around with. And again, it could be another tool for you know, high school or college students who um, you know who are looking for. Um, a way to take a way to take notes. So for for students um, who have um, who have good handwriting, but maybe um, have deficits in organization, tools like this, like these, for for taking or even typing notes, because you you can use um, in, in some cases a type. Uh, can be another part of your toolkit. So all these devices use e-ink, which is very similar to what you know Amazon use, uses um, for their Kindle. And that that there are some some benefits and features um, with e-ink, and one of them is certainly battery life. And also most of these, if you've ever used them, the writing experience is second to none. It feels pretty close to writing pen to pen to paper. Um, and so these are devices that I personally used. Um, Amazon Scribe. So if you're a big, you know, Kindle, you can you can read your Kindle books, but um basically this has become a note-taking uh, tool as well. It uses um, a stylus it, and it uses what's called um has a uses the Wacom technology, which is a EMR or electric magnetic resonance. So what's nice is the stylus does not have to be charged, which is a great thing for the students we work with. Um, and the writing experience is second to none. On uh, many cases, you know, the notes can be notes can be highlighted, searched, emailed, and this is for the most part pretty distraction free. There's no Facebook. There's no games. Pretty much note taking. So that I mean, the two top experiences here would be Amazon Scribe or the Remarkable Two. The Remarkable Two, um, you can also get it with a keyboard as well. But um, again, for students that want to go paperless, um, this can be a great tool because you can import and bring in PDFs, mark them up, uh, take notes. Uh, very thin, lightweight, and they stay charged for um, a long, a, a much longer period of time than an i an iPad or a a computer. A lot of students we work with, when I ask them, let, let, let me see what's on your computer. Most of them usually have 5% or less battery charge. So these definitely, um, you know, stay charged for a much longer period of time. And um, they, you know, again, they provide a really nice writing um, experience, allowing students to organize their materials, you know, into folders, into projects um, as they, um, as they see fit. Has anyone used any of the e-ink or any e-ink devices or i have a i have a family member who uses it for their research okay um the remarkable and yeah. just just absolutely even mathematical formulas yes yeah. uh, incre incredible it's it's a thing of beauty it really how it translates his stuff. Yeah. If you didn't, I mean, if you didn't know and I handed it to you, you'd say, oh, that's something that Apple made. You know, it's just, it's super thin. 
Um, it works really well, and um, it's, a, it's just a great a great device. So again, if you you know depending upon the student what they need, um, especially if you want a distraction free environment, um, they um, it's pretty pretty distraction uh, pretty distraction um, free. So um, talking about AI, um, there's a tool right now, really, it only works under Windows, but if you're working with students uh, who use Windows, um, this is called LightKey, and LightKey uses artificial intelligence to um, help students with both spelling and, and grammar. And so in the background, um, it will basically predict words, and you can see this has categories, almost topic dictionaries in uh, various uh, topics. So you can see technology, industry, business. So you can turn on these different categories uh, to help support students who uh, have very poor um, you know, spelling skills or grammar skills. Let me see if I can, let's see, do compose, can you see? Let's see. So you can see it, it may be hard to see, but you can see it put the U in, where do you, let's say, want. So you can see it's telling me, now all I have to do is press the tab key and it puts it, and then it predicts to uh, go, let's say tomorrow. You can see that it's predicting ahead and all I have to do is hit the tab key. But again, if you have students that are in at, you know high school, college and are, you know, in, in more advanced technical courses that need support for spelling, even in medical and health, they have a lot of different um, chemical terms, pharmacological terms um, that uh, can be really helpful for students that need the support. And it's all done, you know, in the background and it will do grammar. So it will look at four or five words at a time and provide the right spelling and punctuation. The student hits a tab key and it corrects everything in that um, sentence. So that could be an interesting, interesting piece. So with um, AI, um, I put some uh, references to, this is called WordTune AI. This lets you summarize documents. So you could put uh, PDFs, Microsoft Word documents. Um, and if you, again, when you download my presentation, this is a video kind of shows you a little bit about it. Then there's Magic School, which is a whole list of tools that teachers um, might find really helpful for differentiation, creating quizzes, lesson plans, things of that sort. Um, this one, um, that's actually, let me just do that. This is for differentiation, so it lets teachers um, create all kinds of materials and you can actually change the level and the language um, as, as well. And you can um, do it for text or a URL um, or any text or excerpt that you, um, that you see fit. So th these can all be really great tools in the hands of teachers that you know, want to be able to differentiate um, you know, text um, or instruction. There's one I didn't, if you're working, let me just, another one I'll add that, um, again, if you're working with um, college or high school students who are doing research, this is called Scholarcy, and it actually allows students to um, import like PDF articles. So here's note-taking articles. Um, so, I can go here. So what I did was I um, imported um, the, uh, the PDF um, of this uh, article. And then what it does is it uses AI to um, give the student a quick visual of what the key concepts are, the abstract. Um, it also highlights information, gives a synopsis. And then um, you can do, it does a comparative analysis between um, different studies. So th this can be really helpful for students that have, you know, reading disabilities and need to do a lot of research. It kind of cuts through the articles and allows them to um, see, is this an article I, I want to read the entire thing because this is really important? Or is this um, something that I can, you know, um, let me look at another, uh, another article. 
Um, so this is, and you know, of course, they always have access uh, to the full text um, as well. And they can also take notes um, in this and organize their research in this application. So this can be a really um, helpful uh, helpful tool for students, um, you know, in advanced courses and definitely at the college um, levels. This is a um, uh, usually college students will find this to be extremely um, extremely helpful. Brian, I think yes. lost I think law students would find this incredibly yeah. useful. Yeah, for yeah. cases and briefs and yes and um, mm -hmm. uh, so many programs. You know, it, it's that's an amazing tool. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so again, this, this could be another, I, I'll, I'll actually, I forgot to, um, I forgot to add that, but uh, that's another really um, interesting tool. Let me see if there's any other, I have some other digital pin technology, but that's pretty much, this is a, another, um, another tool that uses audio for transcriptions. Um, as well so there's lots of them um, available these are some top top ones and what, what's happened is some of these tools are really they gotten the you know the the ai is really smart and um you know for again for some of the um technical when when students are in you know a medical school or, or even law school and there's technical words a lot of these applications are fine-tuned to understand those words as opposed to you know give you either gibberish or the wrong word. So um, that's how they kind of differentiate themselves. Yes, they all record audio, but uh, some do a better job at differentiating uh, the more technical uh, words that are, you know, in, in the students, um, you know, study. So this captioned ED was actually started by a physician um, who was in medical school with dyslexia and he needed a tool to do the audio transcription. So he decided to to write it himself. Um, so uh, this does a really good job, you know, especially for medical terminology, pharmacolo you know, pharmaceutical words, things of that sort. So they all vary um, a little bit. So yeah. as you can, as you can see, um, it's been, I mean, tremendous advances being made, not only in, in hardware, but, um, you know, in software due to, you know, in, in part due to um, AI and the ability to embed a lot of the AI into the devices. So whether they're using AI for noise canceling when you're recording or they're embedding AI rules, you know, into the hardware, you know, a, a lot of applications are being impacted by it. Um, and, you know, the future, the future is really bright for, you know, students with disabilities and some of these tools that are, are, are coming, you know, are coming out. And it, I have to say, even for myself, it's, it's really hard to keep up the, the pace of what is coming out and what's you know right behind it, but um, it's really a really exciting time for these kinds of technologies and exciting time you know for hopefully students to um, you know uh, utilize these uh, various services um, you know and you know and tools. Um, so you know let let the students you know um, that you work with uh, let them know about some of these resources um, because uh, they are exciting and they make they'll make a world of difference. Um, you know, to, to them, um, in their, um, in their studies. So before, um, before we end, are there any, any questions? Um, yes. Yes. Uh, oh, you just did it. Is that the slide deck again, the QR? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I desperately wanted to get. Yeah. And also okay. probably, um, what's going to happen is, um, I get an email and then I'll give you permission to use it. So don't, don't, you know, there's a little bit of a process, but you'll get the you'll get the slide deck. Okay. All right. So that'll generate an email rather than taking me to a site. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think it's going to ask um, like for permission. I'll, I'll just, I just have to give you permission to uh, view it, and then you be good to go. And if you have any problem, I'll just email it to um, Lori, and um, maybe she can send it out to uh, everyone also. But hopefully. Okay should work out okay and then i'm also i recorded this so there'll be a you'll be able to get the video recording as well so if you have i mean if you you know if you have students that um you have questions or need a consultation i do work with families but i i, I, do, I would say i do most of my work schools call me in to evaluate uh do training and, and help them make decisions with regard to some of these technologies brian i i wanted to let you know um about something that came my way really just in the last week or two that's okay. related to this, but for professionals, there's a company, 
um, uh, doing a product. Um, uh, it's it's uh, called Innovacer. Uh, Innovacer. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, okay. but they have a product called Inscribe. It's an AI tool to assist healthcare providers. So, and what it does is it records the audio of you and the patient. That was you know, for gastroenterologists, internists, whoever. Right, right. But they're also trying, they want me to do a demo about, you know, for, you know, in mental health. Right. And obviously there are ethical issues here. Right. Like the consent, you got to do a lot right. of things. But then it, 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 um, it does a lot of the things that the tools that you've been talking about tonight do to create a progress note, to create a, a right. plan, et cetera. So I'm going to do the demo with them. And oh, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that is, yeah. Some of these two can also split, you know, like the, between speaker one and speaker two. And I'm sure that probably has that capability. Yes. That's what it does. Right. I want to yeah. ask them if it can be done remotely or if it has, yeah, both people have to be in the room. So I'll find out more, but uh, it was good. just it, interesting. Yeah. 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 Great. Thanks. All right. And Thank Brian, you so much. This is yes, wonderful. No Thanks, Brian. You have so much information. It's overwhelming. It's Lori again. Um, yes. I would love you to send the recording and I'll get it to everyone. Great. Great. Um, I'm sure there's a passcode that will be necessary for you. Yeah, to I'll be send able. you all that information. Not a problem. Yeah, that sounds good. So I'll send it out as soon as, you know, either tomorrow morning or tonight. Okay. You send it. Thank you, Brian. All right. Sounds good. So All we'll right. Keep care. the lights on over there. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a nice evening, everyone. Thank you, Brian. Bye. All right. Be Bye. good. Bye. Well, I have to say that's not what I expected. Oh. Well. Hi, Shoshana. Yes, the Orcam is an Israeli company. It's funny. It's funny because this is an Israeli company too. Oh, okay. My, yeah. my friend, my friend actually, um, Evie Posner.